Good morning, I'm Jacqueline Sullivan and I'm from the University of Adelaide and I'm here today to give you guidelines on the application of an ulnar gutter slab. This slab is applied usually for a metacarpal fracture. So at the start of this, it's important to actually make sure you have the right patient and that you have the correct limb. You also need to make sure that the skin is intact and neurovascular status is good. You ask the patient if they can feel this, so you're doing a sensational touch. So, and can you wiggle your fingers? So if you've got all that, then you're ready to go. So the materials you'll need will be a gypsum slab of 10 layers. That's our standard guidelines for casting. You'll also need another piece of slabbing material about five layers thick, and this will go along this section of the hand. We need two pieces of size one stocking net to go over each finger and a size two to go over the arm. We also have soft band, which we use for padding and to be aware of any bony prominences when we're actually padding as well and make sure they're well padded. This is applied with a tension that is not too tight and not too loose. We'll then have a bandage ready to go, some cool water, that room temperature, so that uh, when you have the exothermic reaction between the plaster material and the water, it doesn't actually burn the patient. So now we'll get started. We'll apply the stocking first. So we'll do a measurement of this, and the measurement is that we're going to measure this product from the fingertips down to the elbow. So once we've cut our piece of stocking yet, we slide it over the hand like so. This one you can bring down a little bit further because the actual slab's going to go down here. Put a small hole in for the thumb. Just take that through gently and gently bring that down. Lift out the edges away from the arm and the hairs of the arm. We can actually take this piece now and fold this as so. We take our next piece which we're going to pop over our fingers and we've made a little cut so that they can slide over the spaces. We'll put these on the correct way. Slide that over the back so the longer piece comes over the back like so. And the same over this finger. Once we've got those in place, we'll just secure them down with some tape. We can also just bring those down a little bit now so we know where our edges are and we can see our fingertips. It's important to see the fingertips so you know the circulation is, is still working and not being compromised. So the next piece that we're going to take is our soft band. And we'll just slide it in between these two fingers here and start at the top. Always start at the top so as you make sure you've got the correct length. If you start down here, you're going to be going up and down, too much padding and too short. So come up just past the fingertips there. Angle down, I tend to fold that bit down. Angle down so you can still see the little finger. Come up and make your way down. Start to make your way around the hand, like so. Twice around the palm crease as per guidelines. Make your way down around the wrist here, ensuring that you've got adequate coverage. Making sure there are no loose pieces hanging down. Make your way down the arm and two at the bottom. And the reason you do two rolls at the bottom is that you're going to fold these edges up and you need some padding there against the cast. So now we've got the padding on. So we're going to do the position for the patient. We want the wrist to be cocked back like so, and then the fingers, two fingers here, to be angulated down at about 70 degrees. So once we do that, we just want to make sure we've got all the coverage that we need. We next grab our small piece of back slab that we're going to place here. Plaster in the water, pop it on the table, and get all of that dip sewn into the linear weave of this product. And this way, we're also making sure we actually haven't got any creases. We then place this like so. Keep your fingers out as much as you can. Use the flats of your hands so you don't create any indents. Don't take too long playing around with this. As it starts to set pretty quickly. It'll start setting in about three to four minutes. And that's called a crack set. We then take the longer slab piece and we get the patient to actually lean towards them a little bit so that you're not fighting gravity and it's not going to be falling off. So we take the, the second piece of back slabbing material and we just plop it in through here. Just smooth that out a little bit, like so. So if the patient's leaning in towards you a little bit, 
it actually stops it from falling off. We then cock the wrist back, make sure those fingers are down, and then we start our wrapping. I'll start wrapping from the bottom so then I can concentrate on how the wrapping goes more so at the top and it leaves me a lot more bandage to work that out. Make sure the tension of your bandage is good enough to support the back slab, otherwise it will be flapping in the breeze and the patient will be qu quite uncomfortable. Bring that round through the fingers again, through here, bringing that down. And bringing that down. And I'm going to take this second roll cohesive and just layer that as I come up. And once we get into here, just make sure our position is correct. Once more, the wrist is cocked back. You can also um, buddy sprint the fingers. At the start, if you wish to stop them crossing over, that's a very important thing that you need to remember when you're actually applying this back slab, is that you don't want the fingers to cross over because it can displace the fracture. So just be aware of that. And be careful what materials you are using for a body splinting, something that is not too tight. Well, it's going to cut the circulation off either. So we'll just finish the moulding now. So I tend to put my hand, at, palm of my hand at the back here and push forwards. And with this hand, I'm pushing backwards so that we're getting that to stay there. Hold that for a few minutes, then come up, push down with this hand and press down a little bit with the top hand there just to get that 70 degree angle maintained. Patients can tend to straighten their hands out and the wrist out on you. So check neurovascular status when you're finished. Make sure the patient can move their elbow and arm and check with the patient that they don't think it's too tight. So to summarise, um, if you're a first time casting person uh, or RMO registrar, please get some assistance. You can always ask for help to assist you in maintaining positions as it's not always easy for the patient to hold the position that you need. Um, they're also good to have that person there as a second person to watch what you're doing, learning and observe any mistakes that you may be making along the way with missing padding or open areas. Um, along the way the tips of this are that you also need to make sure that you have all your products ready, you're neurovascularly intact, that there are no wounds in presence, that you've got the patient's permission and that you then um, give them guidelines and uh, patient care handouts on how to care for themselves. Make sure that they can cope at home, they can get dressed, that they can feed themselves and that they're able to do those sorts of things. If not, you'll need to arrange that. So in recap, it is important to make sure that you have the right patient, that you have the right back slab for the particular type of fracture, that you give the patient adequate pain relief prior to starting, that you gather an assistant to help you put on the back slab. Make sure you have the correct equipment ready to go. Make sure that you have done a skin check. Also, a neurovascular check prior and post application and importantly have a consent verbally from the patient to the application of a back slab. Thank you.